from Cahokia in North America to the Inca Empire in South America, people from the Americas have been building societies for a really, really long time. They didn't just pop up when the Europeans arrived, right? You knew that. Hi, my name is Laura and I'll be your guest host for this video on the people of Corral. Corral civilization not only predates all other civilizations in the Americas, it's also the second oldest civilization ever. The people of Corral had an understanding of astronomy and some physics as well as medicinal plants and architecture, a whole lot, making their journey as a society quite peaceful, absolutely peaceful and also musical. So join me as we dig into the past and learn about the people of Corral. Kerala was the epicenter of a civilization around 5,000 to 3,000 years ago in modern day Peru. That is 3,000 to 1,800 before the common era. 3,000 before the year zero. It's, and what's really surprising for me that I just learned is that Ruth Shadi, the, the archaeologist, says that Quechua, the language that's spoken today in the Andes, could have been born in Kerala. And for anybody who knows this, an Andean language to have been born in the coast is mind-blowing. And you can also see that the art and architecture and music that took off from Caral, you can see it all the way in the Incas, thousands of years later. We are way more connected than, than we even experience nowadays as modern Peruvians or those of us in Peru or that know about Peruvian culture. Caral was one of the several urban centers or sites that was part of a larger cultural trend called Norte Chico and Joseph has already talked about this in this same channel so go check it out later. Now the reason why Caralinos or the people from Caral are so special is because they decided to do division of labor. Basically they weren't subsistence farmers and the way to understand what a subsistence farmer is is kind of like living off the grid. You grow your own food and then you just su survive in, in your own making. But the people of Kerala decided to sort of rely on each other. And so some people would be farmers, some people would be artists, some people would be architects, kind of like urban areas nowadays. And that allowed them, that gave them the time to really develop as a society. Not only that, but they had huge huge amounts of trade with with Ecuador because they found spondylus shells. They're like seashells that are kind of like orange. I actually have one right here. Here it is. This, this is it. This is a spondylus. This was actually worth way more than gold. And as you can see, it ha it's kind of like orangey. I just got this as a gift actually. And uh, this was, this is found in the depths of the coast of Ecuador, right? Like off the coast. And um, it, is, it was used and had the same prestige up until the Incas as well. As you can tell, the people of Caral were really big on trade. They had the Thonus uh, shell from Ecuador. They also had uh, depictions of monkeys, meaning that the people that lived in the Amazon must have told them or they must have known or maybe they, some of the monkeys also arrived. I don't know if they found monkey bones but they did find bones from cond condors and also like deer and llamas which were found from the Andes so Caral was just like an epicenter of knowledge and culture and also um, religion and also trade. So there were two people that discovered the area of Caral before Ruth the archaeologist Ruth Shadi did but they didn't really pay much attention. Uh, the first one was the American archaeologist Paul Kosak who uh, was looking at that area, the Valley of Supe in 1948. And then people were mainly concerned with, you know, they were mainly interested in studying the Incas, really. They weren't really interested in the middle of the desert, some like strange looking mounds. And then Carlos Williams, the, arch the Peruvian architect, he also looked at different um, temples or sites in that same valley. But it wasn't really until the third person, archaeologist Ruth Shadi, who uh, really uncovered the whole city of Caral because actually when the people of Caral left um, 1800 before Common Era, so I think like 3,800 years ago, they put like little stones covering the whole of Caral. I can't imagine how long that must have taken, 
but they did. They they covered the whole city as if they were trying to protect something sacred, or maybe they were thinking, we'll be back. Um, the archaeologists don't know why they did that. So if you had been in Kerala in the 1990s before Ruth Shadi had discovered it, you would have seen literally just like seven sand sandy looking mounds in a horseshoe shaped but Ruth Shetty was able to see past that so they were flying they were doing some like observing the area because it is a valley with a lot of different temples so they knew that it was a you know a highly interesting area but they didn't know the importance really of what Corral would become and why it's so you know amazing and why it's so phenomenal as a culture so when i went to corral they told me the story like this ruth Shadi was the only female in that plane and she looked at those seven mounds that were like in a horseshoe shaped and then one in front and then she was like mm, this sounds highly suspicious oh this looks highly suspicious but the other men but the men in the in the plane they were saying like no this is just because of the way the wind blows in and they've so throughout the years the wind has deposited the sand in in this strange looking way and Ruth was not convinced so she brought her archaeology students to the area and said if you help me on this project you know I'll give you a good grade basically and yes they worked there and then they found the oldest civilization in the Americas and why it's so important as well is because Corral is is so old that before that there were there was no civilization there were just groups of people like families surviving together as we've discussed but the running theory up until the discovery of Corral was that the reason the reason behind humans organizing themselves for the very first time ever was because they were concerned for their own safety meaning if there were three groups or three tribes, three groups of people, and two of them were fighting, then the third one could join one of them to either protect from the other one or finish the fight. When civilizations would happen is in order to protect themselves from war or to, be get, to become more powerful. However, this theory was completely debunked with Corral because they didn't find any sort of weapons or armies. After Ruth Shadi found Corral, she saw that in the buildings, there were something called shikras, which are like knitted bags for, filled with rocks and they form part of the walls. What this, what this does is that when an earthquake hits, the whole wall, the whole building, the whole temple will shake but not fall. And this is huge. So engineers from Japan visited the site of Corral to understand it better. So people from 20 something like 2000 something were studying the people from like 5000 years ago shadi also mapped out the city's presumed 370 acre size which includes an amphitheater a lot of plazas you know the temples but also she discovered that there were different housing situations for instance there were there were some like um, houses that were right next to the temples and those were for the elite that must have used the temples in for religious ceremonies etc and then because those houses had two different stoves so they had a stove for the offerings and so for the that was a sacred stove and then they had a stove for cooking at home and they and the reason why they can tell the difference is because of the remains of what was left burnt it was also a society that they didn't really have trash in that sense that they would repurpose everything and when we were doing the tour they told us about the different housing as well we've mentioned the elite we also saw the middle class buildings which were slightly smaller rooms and but the the, the walls were really tall as well and then the farmers would have the smallest sizes so yes there was a difference and from all the cultures that I've heard of uh, in pre-colonial times in Peru, there has always been a sort of organization that goes down to, you know, a sort of religious power and then people that provided specific services like architecture and um, astronomy. And then there were also people that worked the land. In every single culture that I've seen, that I've, that I've gone to visit, the temples that I've seen, whether it's in the coast or it's in um, the Andes. As I mentioned, Corral was a peaceful society for 1,200 years. But what happened at the end was there was a natural phenomenon that brought drought. 
And then when the drought happened, people stopped having food. And then they sort of started doubting. And this is what archaeologists, one of the theories as to why the people of Kerala left. People stopped having faith in the elite that was ruling them. Basically, if they were a religious group saying, oh, if you bring offerings, then, you know, things will be all right. But when that doesn't work, people lost faith in them and then they started to leave. So they didn't resort to violence. They just left. But it is it is interesting to think as to why there was not violence, especially when I think I personally grew up thinking or being told I, mainly by the media that human beings are inherently violent and they, they must have war and conflict all the time. So how did the civilization manage to live completely in peace for 1,200 years? And even when they had no food and they had to leave the city to go look for other places, they still didn't resort to violence. Further excavations in 2000, led by Marco Machacuay and his colleague Rocio Ramburu, discovered a geoglyph. And a geoglyph is a large large drawing made of the ground with durable elements, maybe stones by placing them on the ground, but also if you etch a design on the ground that you can only see like from a high altitude, um, namely like the Nazca lines, which is from another culture for the south in Peru. Now this design is a head with a mouth that's open and then there's something flowing coming out of the head. So it could be flowing hair, but um, they think that's very similar. So some people think that's very similar to this design of severed heads um, in a site called uh, Sachin, to 240 kilometers north. Um, but the people of Kral were known to be peaceful. They didn't sever the heads of anybody. So people still, the archaeologists are still trying to figure out what it means. Some people think that it might be more of a mythological case, you know, a, a case of a legend instead of reality. The archaeologists still haven't found a cemetery. So I think there's still some exciting discoveries to be made. The tour guide told us that he believes that it might be in the mountains that, or hills, very large hills or mountains that surround the area of Karal. If you've been to Machu Picchu, you know that when you're stand, standing in the middle in the ruins, there's like a ring of mountains that are around it. And you have a similar experience in Karal because even though it's not high up, it's actually in the coast, you still have the mountains uh, surrounding it. Some people think there's a really good energy over there. But yeah, so the tour guide told us that he thinks that they probably buried the people in the mountains. I mean, can you guess? Like, can you put in the comments where you think the whole civilization of Karal buried their dead? I mean, it could be that they just like brought the bodies to the beach, to the ocean, and that was like their preferred form of ritual. I have no idea. Chorale excavations also turned up musical instruments. Now these included cornets and flutes, and they were around 70 altogether. And they were made from different types of bones, like bones from deer and llamas, as we have described, but they also had like designs etched on them. And they would be played, like if this is a flute, they would have a hole in the middle, obviously the holes on the side would be empty in the middle, and then you would play it like that. Now, Kerala is not like a super, like a hippie place at all, although they would use probably music in the ceremonies or at the parties. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't a utopia. I don't think there's ever been a society that's been perfect. I had the opportunity to sit with one of the people that is in charge of Kerala nowadays. And they mentioned that they saw religion in a very different way. So they didn't have like a God that they would pray to. It was more like they saw nature as being divine and they had to live in harmony with nature. We still have yet to learn so much from the ancient civilization of Karal, namely where they buried their dead and how did they keep the peace for so long? A thousand and two hundred years of peace, absolute should we learn from them? If you have answers to the aforementioned questions, be sure to write them in the comments below. If you like anthropology videos, then definitely do subscribe. Joseph's gonna be really happy. And if you're interested in my own project as a Peruvian Latina filmmaker, then definitely click on the link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. route to Caral, we have to go through this dense mist area.
This is making a way outside of the city into the countryside. The walls used to be painted red, yellow, or green.